sometimes I, I do look at new nanoparticles as kind of like an asbestos idea because we said this is the new building material. This will solve all of our construction issues. And we're saying that a little bit about nanoparticles too. We're saying these nanoparticles will provide us with the answer to medicine, to new technologies, to new consumer goods, to new applications. And without completing a full risk assessment of all of these nanoparticles, especially with the different types of coatings or of alterations that right now uh, nanoparticles are being, uh, are being are going through, we're not really sure. And we're also not really sure what will happen, like you say rightly, after 30 years. What will happen if somebody's exposed for two years? Okay, maybe nothing will happen. Maybe we won't see any kind of biological changes. But what happens when somebody's been inhaling this specific nanoparticle for 50 years or even for 30 years? So timing is a very important issue and unfortunately we don't have that at our hands right now at our disposal to do these kinds of prospective studies where we can say somebody will be exposed now 10 years later let's follow up and see if nanoparticles cause anything in their lungs or cause anything anywhere else in their bodies and then we'll decide how we regulate we don't have that we have pressures from from the industry right now So now we have a new area of engineered ultrafine nanoparticles. So not only now are they produced naturally in a combustion system, for example, in welding, but they're being produced on a much greater scale in laboratories and produced for our consumer products. PhD students are a very big cohort because we are using these particles continuously on a day-to-day -day basis. And sometimes when we're doing research, we're doing research on what is unknown, so we're not sure whether this concentration in this amount of time and this unit that we're working in is safe for us or not. I guess we're trying to solve those questions eventually in our publications after we do the research. So I always make sure I take precautionary practice measures. I always wear a mask if I can and definitely goggles because it's true. We're not sure. We're working with new combinations all the time and new concentrations and also new forms. We're working with suspensions. We're working with aerosolized nebulizations. For example, what happens when the tennis racket is being produced? Who's being exposed then? Then it's the workers usually, the people that are producing it in the laboratories first and then putting uh, the tennis racket together along the supply chain. Then we have to look at also the decomposition product process. What happens when we throw away our tennis rackets and they're going into landfills? And is there leaching into the ground? Or is there combustion into the air if they're being burned? So when we look at exposure to nanoparticles by consumers, it's not just the use of the consumer goods. It's also the entire production and then the after recycling process. The benefits of nanotechnology are expansive. Um, there's many applications. Immediately I have to look to medicine uh, because we, for the first time, see multiple novel nanocarriers that can reach places that we could never reach before. Uh, for example, we have many different treatments now for anemia that are based on nano carriers of iron oxide. So if you can imagine the ease of availability to your cells and specifically to your blood cells when you have a particle that instead of being the size of a cell, for example, is the size of 30 nanometers, can m much more effectively enter the bloodstream, enter the specific areas where a person suffering from anemia needs iron the most, and be able to treat them and help them lead a more productive life. Well. I'm fascinated by this new area of technology and what it means for public health today and for our future generations. We're going through this time right now where we see this new technology, we see its potential benefits, we see its potential applications, yet we're not always ready to look at all the negative effects that could come of it because of pressures to release for the consumer world. And so I've chosen to go into this field because I'm very interested in the benefits that could come from nanotechnology, but also in ensuring that we can provide our future generations with an environment that isn't going to be self-destructive and isn't going to be poisoning our children in years to come. And so 
I'm very happy to be in this field and I'm looking forward to seeing the potential applications, but also trying to inform consumers as much as possible about just being aware, about knowing what's in their products, and about also being conscientious about the choices that they make when choosing new technologies.